I'm Jim Moran, Vice President for Programs and Outreach here at the American Antiquarian Society, and I'm with our curator of newspapers and periodicals, Vincent Golden, and we're talking about um, uh, characteristics of colonial uh, American newspapers. Uh, Vince, how did people get their news to put in papers? I mean, newspapers would use a variety of sources. Now, since newspapers, I mean, are produced in a local region, most often the locals already knew the news. Mm -hmm. So what they're looking for is news outside of the region. And they would get it from various sources. Often they would get it from other newspapers um, where newspapers would exchange with each other. And so you'd get a newspaper from outside that has news from other regions and you would copy it. You'd also get information like letters um, that people would either send the editor thinking they would be interested in it, they, they would have connections, or correspondence that locals would receive and that they would share with the editor, and then they would get put into the newspaper. And much of that news is also coming in the colonial period from uh, across the pond, correct? Right. Well, m most of the official newspapers would be the British ones, which would have the government news. It would have news of Europe because they're doing the same thing. They're gathering news from other newspapers from around Europe. And so you'll often see them quoting the London Gazette or the Chronicle or whatever British newspaper has come in by ship. And then they would read through and select articles they thought their readers would either want to know or need to know. Uh-huh. So that we, we don't have anything uh, remotely like a, a, a journalist that we would recognize today. No. There was no news service or wire service. Um, it was just gathering news from other sources. And so sometimes a newspaper would print local news, but more with the idea of getting that news out there mm. so that the exchange papers would uh, pick up the news and spread it. That this was local news that was important enough to distribute elsewhere. Uh, you mentioned uh, letters were also a source of news. Were uh, early printers also postmasters? Did they exchange, were they connected to the postal service in any way? Um, some were. Um, like the very first successful newspaper, the Boston Newsletter, um, the first editors or publishers of that were the local postmasters, so they would take advantage of that to put their newspapers on the postal routes huh. and huh. basically get distribution. Yeah. Um, they would take advantage of their position yeah. um, to, uh, so to get their newspapers out so they weren't necessarily paying postage to um, like a like a someone sending a letter would, mm -hmm. but they would take advantage, oh, put it on the horse um, and get it over to the next city over to their subscribers. So uh, you mentioned subscribers. Were there um, organizations of any kind subscribing, like, uh, say, a, a coffee house or a tavern? Well, there, coffee houses or taverns could be one thing. There are sometimes like reading clubs, too, but it, it, understanding that they would subscribe to the paper and then the members would or whoever is present would share it mm -hmm. or read it out loud to everybody um, you especially find that like in the revolutionary war um, trying to get the news spread to get the, the latest um, of what's going on mm -hmm. with the war what's going on with especially like political speeches um, try to get the word out try to get the fever up for your cause mm -hmm. How, how did subscribers get their paper? Um, obviously, if you're in a center where the paper is being printed, you could walk to the printing house or, as you said, have a carrier deliver it. But how are these being distributed more widely? Um, mostly through like postal writers or there's, if there's like carriages with regular routes that they would but put a bundle of papers for the next city and put it on the, on the coach mm -hmm. to get it delivered. And you'd often find subscribers' names written across the, uh, the top of them. And so they would 
take a bundle, here's the subscriber's names on them, and say, okay, here is the Lancaster, Pennsylvania group, and send it out to them from Philadelphia hmm. Hmm. and get it to whoever might be subscribing it, to it out there. I've noticed in looking at some of the papers, too, that uh, publishers are often uh, lamenting the lack of... Uh, payment by their subscribers. That seems to be kind of a, a, a continual thread. Right. You're right. It's different than it is today. Today, you pay, you make a payment up front, and you start getting your newspaper. Right. At that time, people could subscribe to it and owe the newspaper money, but they would be legally obligated to pay it. And in fact, the subscription, they couldn't say, I just want to end my subscription until they've paid up. If they haven't paid up, the subscription could continue to go on and incur them more debt if they haven't paid it. Yeah. Yeah. We just shared with you some characteristics of early American newspapers, colonial newspapers from before the year 1800. But the Society collects newspapers up through 1876 and from every state in the Union. We also are actively working with outside vendors to digitize our collection of American newspapers, but we always preserve the original artifacts. We believe those are very important, and we want people to be able to come here to study them so that they completely understand early American print culture.